Hi guys, so I'm going to read Tales of Suspense number 45. So this is a very important issue in the history of Iron Man. Because there, there's three first appearances. There's Happy, the first appearance of Pepper Potts and Happy Hogan. Who, Pepper Potts is, um, Iron Man's, like, secretary. She, she was portrayed by Gwyneth Paltrow in the movies. And Happy Hogan... Is Iron Man's bodyguard. He was betrayed by I think John Favreau in the, in the movies, and the third first appearance is the the Blizzard, who in his first appearance is called Jack Frost, but is his he's well better well known as the Blizzard. So he's Iron Man's first like well known villain, like reoccurring villain. But an eighteen page super epic, the icy fingers of Jack Frost are reaching out for Iron Man. Once I seal you with me in my unbreakable cube of ice, even your strength will be useless to you, Iron Man. Also in this great issue, introducing Pepper Potts and Happy Hogan, destined to become two of your favorite supporting characters. Iron Man and the icy fingers of Jack Frost. Well, Iron Man, I didn't expect to see you here in Stark's office, but it's a pleasant surprise. I have a score to settle with you, too. Wait, that voice. I recognize it. I, I know who Jack Frost really is. Story, plot, Stanley, script, R. Burns. Art, Don Heck, lettering, S. Rosen. Iron Man is amazed, and indeed he should be. For who has ever seen a walking snowman whose deadly cold resolve is to destroy Anthony Stark as well as Iron Man? Can Iron Man outwit this human snowstorm who can blanket anything and anyone with a blizzard of destruction? You'll learn the shocking answer when you meet a villain who possesses an icicle for a heart, Jack Frost. On one day near Indianapolis, Holy smoke, what's that? It's going so fast I can't tell whether it's a whirlwind or a stripped down rod. It's probably some nut doing a test run on the public highway. Before entering the 500 mile classic. Let's get him. <sniffs> we should have guessed. Who, look who it is. Iron Man using his jet skates. Those transistor powered wheels of his can do 200 miles an hour. Well if Iron Man is in that kind of hurry. It must be something important. <sniffs> he must be on the trail of some super criminal. So let him alone. He knows what he's doing. It's just his will. We'd never be able to catch him anyway. You know, I'm sure glad that guy is on our side. Hmm, those officers stopped chasing me. They probably think I'm on, en route to some emergency. Well, I am, in a way. As Tony Stark, I'm scheduled to drive in the 500-mile Speedway Classic, which begins shortly. But helping the FBI clamp down on a spy ring this morning made me good and late. It'll take to the air. There was no danger of my smashing into a car on the highway. I could have instantly soared into the air with my transistor-powered jet devices if the need arose. Hmm. There's my sports car now. I'll make a quick change from this collapsible Union suit to my Tony Stark identity, then head for the racetrack. Soon after, at the speedway. Hey, Mr. Stark, we're getting worried. What took you so long? Nothing that would interest you, boys. How is the Stark special? Purring like a Persian cat, boss. With this new engine, you ought to pass them other crates like they was stin still. Point is, how do you feel about the long grind ahead? I'll put it this way, Mike. Iron Man couldn't be in better shape. Minutes later, the fame race begins. <clears throat> hmm. If I keep up this place, I'll not only win every lap, but set a new track record. Suddenly, as Stark enters the turn, Oh, I, I feel a terrible squeezing pain in my chest. It must be in my heart. And my anxiety to get to the track. I, I forgot to recharge my middle chest plate. <sighs> now there isn't enough electrical energy in it to keep my heart pumping. Something wrong with the Stark special. Stark seems to be writhing in agony. Stark's losing control of the car. It's getting up to the embankment. Stark's a goner. He's pinned inside the car. 
the wheels bent, crushed against my body. If I were Iron Man, I'd be out of here in a second. But now, Iron Man could smash out of this car as if it were made of tissue paper. But I haven't the strength even to move my hands. Don't go near the wreck. It's a fire. He'll blow up any moment. But there's someone inside. Can't leave him there. Maybe I can pull him out. No, go back. You can't help me. I'm pinned by the wheel. Big deal. Now you're unpinned. But, but when the flames hit the gas tank... Look, bub. I'm scared enough without any help from you. So clam up and let's get out of here, huh? Too bad no bookie was around. He would have given me ten to one. I'd be strumming a harp now. I'll pay you fifty times as much if you rush me to the... Uh, I'll pay you fifty times as much as if you rush me to the nearest motel. Lock me alone in a room. And no questions asked. <sighs> hey, you're turning pale as milk. Something's ailing you. And it ain't just from the crack up. I told you. Don't ask questions. Carry me to your car. Maybe I ain't no Louis Pasteur. But you don't look like you're gonna make it. Maybe we gotta call a kill there. No, no. I can doctor myself. Just get me to that room. <sighs> I've gotta hold out long enough to cross its threshold. Otherwise, it's the end of Iron Man. And his exploits, too. <laughs> Finally, behind a locked motel door... Now, gotta make it to the wall socket. Just a few inches more. Ah, electrical current. It's like adrenaline stimulating my heart back to normal action. Hmm, so I've cheated the Undertaker again. Thanks to a grouchy stranger who put, pulled me out of the wreck. I gotta make sure I reward him handsomely. Five minutes later. Explain something to me, Stark. You crawled into that room like you were out for the count. Now you walk as alive and strong as Sonny Liston. How come? It's a mystery, chum. Please step into the lobby. And then in the motel cocktail lounge. Name? Harry Hogan. Uh, down at Stillman's gym, they nicknamed me Happy. Still, because no one's ever caught me with a smile. How come you gave up your ring career? Because I was too successful. At losing, that is. After I got a guy against the ropes, I never had the heart to finish him off. So I gave it up. Hey, I checked for 50,000 claims. Is that all you figure your life is worth, Stark? Well, if you're dissatisfied, I'll double the amount. After all, I wouldn't be here if not for you. Me? I'm always dissatisfied. Forget about putting the price on yourself. And don't start the eternally grateful bit. I didn't save you for no fee. It was just a reflex action. But surely you can use some money. Mister, what I can use is a nice steady job with three weeks vacation, with pay, a good pension plan, and all kinds of fringe benefits. Mm, if I'm liable to black out suddenly, as I almost did today, it wouldn't be a bad idea to hire a combination chauffeur bodyguard. Or I could use a chauffeur, Happy. If you want it, the job's yours. Now you're talking. A nice, quiet, safe job. No broken noses, no knockout punches. What kind of a guard car do you have? I don't like jalopies. Well, I have, among others, a Rolls Royce, a Caddy Eldorado, and a two-seater Jaguar convertible. They managed to get me where I'm going. Mm, I had the hunch you weren't exactly starving. Well, those crates are okay for a start, I guess. I'm glad you're satisfied, Happy. I'll write you a check for ten grand, so you can get a few odds and ends to prepare for the job. A few days later in New York. How do I reach your plant? All that I know is that it's in Flushing, Long Island. Uh, that's my main research center, Happy. I have other plants all over the world, one in each continent. That's real impressive, boss, but it still don't tell me where to head to... Uh, two head for now. Proceed on south on Grand Central Parkway. I'll tell you which exit to turn off at. Hey, ain't that the new baseball stadium? The site of the World's Fair? Right. It'll be exciting having the fair as my next door neighbor in 64. 
Turn off at the next exit and make a sharp right turn. Soon. As probably noticed, Happy, the plant is heavily guarded. Boys meet Happy Hogan, my new chauffeur. Hmm. If Hogan drives like I once seen him fight, you better be sure you use your seatbelt, boss. Who asked you, big mouth? You I could fight with my pinky. Easy, Happy. Your ring days are over. Except after I introduce you to Pepper Potts, my secretary. You can fight all you want with her. I do regularly. Hey, ain't that Iron Man? Yeah, he uh, happens to be a good friend of mine. Always drops in when he's in the neighborhood. Must play at my close friendship with Iron Man. It alibis Iron Man sometimes two coincidental appearances whenever I switch identities for some emergency. Well, there's one guy that could have been the heavyweight champ easy. He could be Dempsey, Louis, um, Marci Marciano, Liston, and me all together with one mitt strapped behind his back. Pepper, meet Happy Hogan. From now on, he'll be my private chauffeur. Oh no. With eligible bachelors as scarce around here as dinosaurs, you hire a battle-scarred ex-pug. It couldn't be a Rock Hudson. No, he has to look like Bella Lugosi. Don't pay attention to my kisser, doll. Beneath this rough exterior beats a heart full of love at first sight. You know, you're my type. Insults will get you nowhere, Mr. Hogan. Are you brushing me off? Me, Happy Hogan, who finally has found the dame of his dreams? My dear Mr. Hogan, your dream would only be my nightmare. In short, you wouldn't be my type even if you were my type. Mm, I get the picture. It seems stark. What makes your ticker go thump? Thump, right? Right. Only he doesn't know I'm alive. But someday he will. And then he'll give up all his actresses and debutantes, and I'll become Mrs. Anthony Stark. How do you like that? I flip over a doll and what happens? I got a love triangle on my hands. The only triangle in this situation is your head, Mr. Hogan, which comes to a nice sharp point. Now excuse me, I have work to do. Meanwhile, in Stark's private office, well, I've only got a moment to myself. I'll check out my Iron Man costume. If something malfunctions at the wrong time, any enemy could reduce me to junk. Hmm. All the compressible, com collapsible components of my costume expand perfectly. My chainmail armor needs no oil. Oh, my chainmail armor needs no oiling. The air intake valve is okay. My antenna broadcasts and receives the proper frequencies. My electrical beam is on, or system is on the beam. Every device in my accessory belt is present and accounted for, like a pilot gives his plane a shakedown check before takeoff. I must make sure my gears are in working order before I zero in on a mission. Uh-oh, what's that? The alarm. Someone's tampering with the vault, which contains vital materials and cash reserves. Well, I can reach the thief before the guards do. Only I know about the secret exit from my office, which leads to an under labyrinth of underground passageways. So he's he's talking in his head, so I won't, I won't do the Iron Man voice. When he talks with in his head, like with the thought balloons, I, I won't um I won't do the Iron Man voice. But to a labyrinth of underground passageways beneath every section of the plant. Zzz. Funny, every time I feel that Iron Man's job is thankless work, wearing this cramped, painful costume. And risking my neck in every quarter of the globe. Something always happens which no one but Iron Man can tackle properly. I wonder what that human rat is nibbling at the cheese locked in this vault. In the vault this time. It's Professor Shap... Uh, Shap... Shap... -a one of my most trusted scientists. Iron Man! I was prepared for anything except you! Stay back! No, now I see all the stories about you are true. Bullets only bounce off harmlessly off your armor. Blast you! I wouldn't have dared try to rob Stark's vault if I knew you were a watchman here. I'm not. I uh, just dropped in for a visit. Heard the alarm and investigated before Stark did. Now give me your gun. 
talk, Shana, uh, Shanap, Shap, Anka. What are you after in this vault? Shroom. The formula for Stark's tiny transistors. I could sell it for a fortune. Listen, Iron Man. Stark's for formulas are worth millions. Help me get them, and I'll make you my partner in the most fantastic scientific discovery. You're wasting your breath, Shamp Shapanka. I'm locking you in the vault till Stark arrives. But I found the secret of eternal life. Think of it. The money would finance my research into human immortality. You think about it before uh, till Stark shows up. Shortly after, Iron Man stomps back to Stark's office. By the time I return to the vault as Tony Stark, the guards will have discovered Shapanka. So I'll have to cover for Iron Man's brief appearance and departure. Did you hear that alarm, boss? Seems you got a crook in your organization. A punk named Shapanka. That's right. That's right, Mr. Stark. We found Professor Shapanka locked in the vault. I'll take you to him. Shapanka? You got me, Stark. Or rather, your friend Iron Man got me. I suppose you'll call the police now, eh? No, Shapanka. Perhaps what that's what I should do, but I won't. Release the professor, boys. I'm letting you go because of the brilliant work you did in the past. But you're no longer a man we can trust with the vital secret projects I'm engaged in for the government. You're washed up, professor. Oh, so pack your things and get out, Shapanka. And never let me see you again. How noble of you, big-hearted Stark, tossing a crumb of freedom to a lowly crook. How about adding a few crumbs of severance pay? You've got so much money, Stark, you wouldn't miss a few of those greenbacks. Boy, talk about nerve. You want I shoot... I, I should boot him out of his ear, boss? Easy happy. Better leave while I still feel so generous, Shapanka. I might get cold feet about releasing you. Cold feet, that's it. I wanted money, and you just handed me a million dollar solution for nothing. Thank you, Stark. And one day I'll personally demonstrate my gratitude to you. You're cracked, Shana Shapanka. Stop off to at a good psychiatrist on your way home. Cold feet, ha! Huh? Cold feet! The whole world will remember someday what you said as I achieve eternal life. Something tells me you're nutty as him for letting him go. You might be right, Happy. His mad raving about immortality makes me uneasy. Weeks later, as Professor Shapanka's ce uh, cellar lab, Stark doesn't realize it, but he gave me the one clue I needed to perfect my formula for prolonging human life. I froze an alley cat in this block of ice days ago. My heat ray has now completely melted the ice. Let's see what has happened to the cat. It's in perfect condition, as it leaps away in fright, as alive as the day I encased it in life-preserving ice. I'm a genius. My theory is proven. For a long time, scientists have known that freezing something can stop its aging process indefinitely, as with frozen food. Surgeons even freeze patients on the operating table to ensure their survival during difficult operations. Why won't not do the same for the purpose of keeping a man young forever? I can live forever by lying in an ice vault somewhere, asleep while frozen. But what good would that do me? That's where Stark's cold feet comes in. I'll create a special freezing suit that will keep my body temperature way, way down. But I will not be asleep inside an ice block. Oh no! My suit will give me special powers to freeze whatever is near me, and yet render me safe from anything. Before I am through, the secrets I tried to steal from Stark will look like chicken feed. And so a week later at a Long Island bank. Hey, look what, what what's walking in. Why the fancy get up, mister? What do you want? What does anyone want from a bank? Money, my dear fellow. Cold cash. For Pete's sake... He's just turning himself into a walking snowman. That change only affects me. All further changes will affect you. By shooting forth cold jets of oxygen, I can instantly freeze anything or anyone on contact. There's enough air for you to breathe, but you can't move till the ice melts. I'm a one-man sprinkling system. 
except that whatever I sprinkle turns immediately to ice. I laugh at burglar alarms, since I can freeze their electrical systems to uselessness. Then as the walking snowman leaves a marble igloo, One side, all of you! Fortunately, I have a device that can de-ice me instantly, so within seconds I can again resemble a normal human being. I can't wait till I meet Stark again. I'll give him cold feet that he'll remember forever. And Iron Man, what a fitting revenge I've dreamed up for him. He'll become utterly harmless when I convert him into a hunk of cold steel. Thus days pass, as Professor Shapanka inspires awe in the hearts of all New Yorkers. This is amazing! We can't stop him! Our bullets turn into snowflakes! Bang, bang, bang! Ha <laughs> ha! Meanwhile, I can escape with my stolen loot. But just to make sure I'm not pursued, I'll put that police car into a deep freeze. Gosh, it's lucky I happened to pass by with my camera. This will make a terrific front page picture for my newspaper. Next morning, as Shapanka reads the tabloids, Well, they've even given me a name now. Jack Frost. How corny can you get? Yet the moniker does have an appropriate ring. Jack Frost, I shall remain to my trembling public. Now Jack Frost will pay off Anthony Stark for firing Professor Shapanka. I'll walk right into his pa plant and destroy it, along with every one of his precious governmental projects. And half hour later, Sound the alarm! It's that Jack Frost character we read about in the papers! Stand back, whoever you are, or we'll fire! Fire, you fools! My ice is more than a match for your useless bullets. Great guns! Our slugs are turning into a small blizzard before they can hit him! <laughs> Mr. Stark! Mr. Stark! It's Jack Frost! The menace the whole town is buzzing about! He's after you! Run for your life! Don't worry about me, Pepper. Just stay out of the way until the help arrives. Click. I'll change instantly to Iron Man. Later, I'll tell my staff I was having a secret conference with them. Meanwhile, outside... Hey, what's that? The bell so soon? I had my minute snows between rounds. Clang, clang. It's Jack Frost, you idiot. He's here to collect Mr. Stark. Look at him. He's blocking the entrance with an ice wall. I always hated you, Miss, Pot Miss Potts. You always treated me so coldly. Now it's my turn to freeze you out. I gotta work fast before I get the cold treatment. I'll shoot off the lock of Stark's private office, so maybe Stark can escape that nut. But then, as Happy Hogan bursts into Stark's inner sanctum, Jumping catfish! What's Iron Man doing in here? Hey, where's my ever-loving boss? Whoa, that was close. I turned my back just in time. Suddenly, Out of the way, fool! Not that being knocked cold uh, should be any novelty to you. Ugh. Iron Man, I didn't expect you to be here, but this gives me the chance I've been waiting for. Don't climb any closer. Wait, I recognize that voice. Of course, I am Professor Shapanka, and I notice that the brave Iron Man finally cowers before a force stronger than himself. Not really, Shapanka. You'll soon see. I, I'm falling! Got him, temporarily. Now to shut the trap door and leave him to wander in the underground labyrinth. But as the sliding floor starts to roll back. A neat trick, Iron Man, but it won't work. I'm freezing the motor that makes the door slide back and forth. Now it's stuck, and in a moment I'll have climbed back into the room with you. The icy fingers of Jack Frost, gripping the open trap door. Well, it won't be hard for Iron Man to make you lose your grip. Oh, well, it won't be hard for Iron Man to make you lose your grip. <sharp inhale> Fool! I'll get as many fingers or hands as I care to create with my ice-making mechanism. He's right. Already I'm beginning to feel an icy numbness spread through my body. Right, right through my iron uniform. There's only one chance in a million for me to defeat him. As long as he doesn't know that I'm also Tony Stark. First, I'll turn on my searchlight beam full power. And now, Iron Man. 
By hooking up with certain miniaturized generators, I can turn it into a heat ray. That'll stall you until I fashion the only weapon that can completely defeat you. A miniature furnace. Luckily, I had the right component parts in my accessory belt. All right, Jack Frost. We've danced to your tune, and now it's time to pay the fiddler. Here, this will warm you up. Turn it off! Turn it off! I can't move! I feel as though I'm in the middle of a blast furnace! Oh no, my ice is melting! I must get happy and every, anybody else, Jack Frost is frozen, out of the office. I should be grateful to Jack Frost. For one thing, I never heard Pepper or Happy so quiet before. Look, it's Iron Man! Jack Frost has met his Waterloo! Presently, a scorched figure staggers out. No more! No more, please! I, I give up! Grab him, boys. Well, I adjust the automatic sprinkler system. Boy, Mr. Stark will sure be grateful to Iron Man for this. Say, where is the boss, anyway? Presently, as the de-iced Professor Shapanka is tor turned over to the police. I'll go get Stark for you. I know where he is. You men wait here. For this, I gave up a peaceful career in the ring. Should have had my head examined. But I can't quit now. Looks like Stark is needs a heap of protecting. An Iron Man that may not always be here. They say that ignorance is bliss, so Happy Hogan should be the most blissful guy in town. More of the same next issue. Don't miss it. The end. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. Um, thank y'all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.